Hello there, and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to go over some building techniques that you might find useful when you are planning and building your robot petting zoo animal. And we're gonna do that by exploring two projects, the squirrel and the chameleon. So the squirrel, when I get a piece of robot food or paper and I feed her, she swishes her bushy tail. So you might have an animal that has a tail that you want to move. Or if we take a look at the chameleon, when I get close to the chameleon, it changes color to blend in with the pink flower behind it, like so. Um, so we're gonna explore some building techniques associated with these two projects. Let's start with the chameleon. So in the chameleon, you might notice that the body is made out of some styrofoam balls. So let's pretend that you have an LED in your project somewhere. You want something to light up, you want something to change color, and you're looking for a way to make that LED a little bit more impactful, not just one little tiny point of light, but really a, a bigger piece of, of light. You might use a styrofoam ball or say a packing peanut to do that. Packing peanuts make really great building materials because they're oftentimes free and um, they're just really fun to build with. But also styrofoam balls do too. You can just smush an LED right inside that styrofoam ball. No tape, no glue. Looks really, really cool. Um, you might notice too that my chameleon is mounted directly to the cardboard wall behind it. How did I do that? Well, let me show you. I grabbed a piece of cardboard. I grabbed my cutting tool like so, and I just cut, I cut an X in the cardboard like that. Um, you can grab a pencil or anything else that has a point on the end of it and smush through your X to make it into a little hole. And then you take your LED, whether it's a single color, tri-color, whatever, and you feed it through wires first, pull it through and ta-da, you've got an LED mounted directly to your cardboard, whether it's got styrofoam on it or not. Um, and you could put a little bit of glue down there or you could even just tape the LED down back here and now it's not gonna move anywhere. So those are a couple building techniques that I used to make the chameleon. And I wanna show you a building technique that I used to make the squirrel's tail. And to do that, let's look inside of our squirrel. So if I open her up, da, 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 you can see there's a motor back here, and that is where the tail is attached. So if I turn it to the side, you can kind of see that motor there, but it's a little bit difficult to see everything that's going on. So I made a simpler version that we could investigate a little bit. So here's my simple tail. See, it says tail. <laughs> so if we wanted the tail to move, it would move like that. Well, let's take it apart and see how it works. So I just popped the servo horn off here. And you see the servo horn, I use the one with two um, uh, wings on it, whatever, any shape will work. I just taped the wings down and then that will pop right on and off your motor there. And then to get the motor in the cardboard, you can even see the lines that I used to draw it. I'll grab my thing here. To mount the motor to it, I just drew around the outside of the motor like so. I used a blade, uh, like so, to cut on the inside of the lines that I made, see that? Because when you cut on the inside of the lines, you can feed your motor through wire first again. You can pop it right inside that piece of cardboard and now the little wings on the motor hold it in place. Again, no tape, no glue. You pop your tail on there zoop, 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 you now have a building technique to help you make a tail or to help you build with LEDs. And with the, just those three quick building hacks, you can make all kinds of really cool, fun, interesting, robot petting zoo animals, right? Um, down below in the description, we've put a link to our build page where there are some tips and tricks like this on the build page, um, including the ones that I showed you here today, as well as some other hummingbird hacks and building techniques as well. So be sure to check those out because those might spark some great ideas for your robot petting zoo animal. All right, in the next video, we're gonna go over how to make mechanisms out of just cardboard and craft supplies and how to incorporate those into your robot petting zoo animal. All right, I'll see you there.